Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a health plan enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about t-shirt culture, what they are, what, how I rehab this, how to take it out of its sterile jar and to basically grow it out. And then we're going to follow a little bit of the journey of the growth. As usual, I'm going to provide updates at the end of the video. And I'm going to uh, give you some information on the grower here, which is Rare Plant Tissue Culture. Their Instagram is going to be on the screen for you. And I'm going to basically regurgitate all the information that they've given me about these plants and where they come from and how they were made and how they will change the plant market in the future. It's gonna be a pretty long video but I'm not gonna show you my face through this video. I'm just gonna give you a close-up on these beauties as I share everything that I've learned about them. Okay so these were gifted to me and for legal reasons I cannot disclose where I am right now except for the fact that I will be home in about two weeks. So these guys are stuck with me for a little while. I'm going to be moving from hotel to hotel and my task is to keep this alive and then when I get back, I'm going to wait for the right time to pot it up uh, outside of this. So the tip that I got is that these guys have to be kept in bright indirect light, which is why it's living under this hotel lamp right here. And then they need to be in cooler temperature, about 24 degrees Celsius, because that's how they were grown in their tissue culture labs. Um, and Thankfully, the hotels that I'm staying in are relatively cool. If you keep them in like too hot of a condition, this gel may actually liquefy and that may actually encourage mold or infection and things like that. So these guys are actually very sensitive right now. They're living in sterile condition and these gel are actually their food. They're actually consuming it. And apparently this gel is good for about a month. In the lab, every month or so, they would actually have to change these out and give them more nutrients, bigger jars. And that is actually a dangerous process each time they try to do that because that is a chance for infection because they need to be sealed completely tight uh, away. And this is very, very prone to infection and bacteria. Again, this is the Philodendron Pink Princess, the Philodendron Giganteum, that's Varigata here. And we're gonna get some close-up looks. This one has no roots yet. So they told me to wait for roots before I pot them up into sphagnum moss. And when I you see there's no roots here yet, this is the Florida beauty. So when I pot these up, uh, I will probably have to put them in a propagation box for about maybe one to two months to let them acclimatize because they're still living in very, very humid conditions right now. So you don't want to shock them. For this pink princess, there's actually many, many vines in there. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the people who made this. Uh, again, the, the Instagram is rare plant tissue culture. They prefer to remain anonymous because it is a very competitive industry. They do not sell uh, in Thailand and they actually only export so they can currently take orders from the us and europe so if you're a business there feel free to reach out you can order different types of rare plants from them and mostly they work with variegated plants and they also do uh, purchase orders so if you have a mother plant that you want replicated they can also do that for you uh, they of course discreetly and under a purchase order terms if you want to just order stock, like ready stock, their minimum purchase is around like 5,000 US dollars. And that is actually a lot because I think I was shared the, the price list a little bit. They range from, I don't know, somewhere from 10, it could be five to 10 US dollars. And some of them can be like 40, 50 US dollars per bottle. So it's quite a bit of a minimum order. Uh, most houseplant collectors can't fulfill that. But anything smaller than like 5,000 US dollars is not worth their time. And they do ship worldwide. Yeah, and their lab is actually currently under renovation. They promised to give me access to their lab for a future content. So I'll be back here in Thailand for that. And once again, thank you for these specimens. I will try to take care of them and I will give you guys an update on how they do. Of course, because of this long travel time and a lot can go wrong during this <laughs> travel period. Uh, so my fingers are crossed. All right, so what's going on in the tissue culture market here in Thailand? Um, it's very competitive. It's run almost like a mafia. And there are a lot of these emerging in the local plant markets. So uh, this rare plant tissue culture didn't want to be involved in the local businesses. So they, that's why they only engaged in exports. A lot of the labs here are operated by either professionals or by home growers. And uh, quality does matter. Every lab produces different quality products depending on their expertise, depending on how sterile their environment is. 
So I'm just gonna be fiddling with this because I'm a hand talker and I don't want you to see my face. I'm in a hotel room right now and it's super late at night. So every lab has different formulas and different care and different sterilization method and a lot of them can get tainted easily and also the way that you do it there are different techniques and of course we have to believe that the techniques are getting better and better over the years and uh, tissue culture is actually performed for over 20 years a lot of them are done for agricultural purposes so a lot of the food that we consume are tissue cultured so this is not a new industry by any means uh, tropical foliages have also been tissue cultured Re recently of course with the rare aeroid craze there is an increased demand for them and particularly for the variegated ones now for the regular uh, rare plants they're also grown in the US and Europe. There are of course labs all over the world. Thailand is not unique. However, they do need to weed out a lot of the plants. Like the, the way that they would do it is they would take a node, they would clean the nodes, and then they would uh, slice it, and then they would put it in a solution. And then from that growing eye, there will be many, many branches that come out of it. And then they would grow those branches, and then they will start producing more leaves, and they'll produce offsets. And then they would keep cutting it and separating. Keep in mind that each process, each time they cut away a baby from the, apparently it's a clone, the chances of variegation is there, but then it's quite low. So out of a thousand plants, uh, rare plants, that you take out from a variegated tissue, you may end up with only one or one to five variegated plants as an end product. This is why they are outsourced in Thailand because it is a labor intensive process. It takes a lot of time and manual labor. You do need to cut it slowly. As far as I know, there are no robotic technology yet to do that. And again, it's easy for them to get contaminated during this process. So it is quite risky. And yeah, so this place here actually specializes in the variegated. So. In this case, let's say this is the Philodendron gigantium, thousands of these actually get thrown away, that those that are not variegated. So you, you, they wasted a lot of space, a lot of manual labor uh, in the process. This is also why they're more expensive, but they're still relatively cheaper than the regular uh, plants that were propagated by seedlings or by uh, vegetative cuttings, which is what I often do in my videos. So as I mentioned earlier, the process of multiplying them is not as fast and easy as I originally thought. You do need the mother plant and you do need to study it. Like sometimes the first time you do it is wrong. You may have to sacrifice many, many mother plants and many, many months until you get the formula, the technique correct. And then from then on, you produce these and these will produce babies. And of course, the original note will keep producing babies as well. Uh, once you remove this and you keep keep it in the solution, the meristematic is the the mare stems will keep producing uh, baby plants like this, and there is a controversy. People are uh, a little bit worried about, oh, you know, are these qualities bad because they're tissue culture? There's this uh, scandal with the uh, tetrasperma uh, that the tissue cultured are weaker. That could either be because it is a weak, uh, maybe a bad formula, maybe a bad lab made the plant or it was subjected to bad care because this is important too. the care here uh, is, is quite important of course they may be biased so don't take every word that I said as gospel but they said that these plants actually do grow out healthily and they can even fruit and flower like a normal plant would there's absolutely no difference between these and regular plants according to them of course i'm new to this and this market is still relatively new this but it's coming into the market it's flooding into the market which is why i'm doing this video now uh, there are pros and cons to this we will discuss in many many episodes to come but yeah we uh, it is unavoidable this technology is happening uh, a lot of sellers are starting to adopt this they have to if not they will basically not make it if, if this is something that works this is a, a gold rush basically for tissue culture uh, and unfortunately thailand does it better than indonesia as far as i know again i don't know many tissue culture labs in indonesia they haven't reached out to me yet but thai people they're a lot more professional there are a lot of people with degrees and they also have a lot of uh, investments put into it which is why a lot of them are coming out of thailand so be on the lookout for those but be skeptical also and do let me know if you have any experience with 
growing this out. Apparently, rehabbing this is easy, um, putting this into a moss and having it grow into proper medium. So I'm going to walk you through with that process as I go along. So what plants are coming out of tissue culture? Well, literally everything you can imagine. All the rare aeroids are uh, out. So they are making the Gloriosum variegated, the Tetrasperma variegated, the UPI variegated, and you bet your butt off that they're making the Spiritus Sancti as well. So they're going to be coming into the market. It's not as fast as you think. Uh, so they shared with me that the lead, typical lead time for production, let's say if you provided a mother plant for them to start doing the culture, it could take up to nine months to build around a thousand stocks. And that is if nothing goes wrong. But of course, every species is different. They have different formulas. And now we're talking about aeroids, but I've also spoken with another local Indonesian tissue culture person who mentioned that the Indonesian endemic plants are a little bit difficult to tissue culture. I'm not sure if that's true or not, or maybe because I don't know, people have, again, every lab has their own experience level and confidence but this one this particular lab here says that they've managed to do literally everything um, not so much with Hoyas they're still figuring them out but you can take tissue culture you can take the tissue out of of course the growing eye of the plant or you can even take it out of the flower and the best way apparently is to get it out of the seed so if you can have the seed of the plant you can tissue culture it with a higher success rate and of course for variegated plants, you do need the uh, variegated mother plants and that is a huge cost. And that is why they're still relatively expensive. The original cost of the, you know, the buying the mother plant to actually research it, trial and error, and to grow them out and to get all these jars, to get the climate control, to get the staffing, to get the space. It actually is not as easy as we think. So uh, there are initial uh, re release will not be as cheap as we think they would be but I think in the course of you know a few years these will become very very inexpensive and a lot of the rare plants that we we call rare and unaffordable will become very 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 affordable very quickly with this technology and this is exactly what they uh, the rare plant tissue culture people are trying to achieve actually they're very passionate about plants they're passionate about the technology and they would really like to put these beautiful plants in the hands of people so people can access them and that is a, uh, i think a pretty good cost and it's pretty much aligned with what i have uh, in mind however there are also people who believe that plants should be uh, how do you call it they should be a little bit more um, not protected they should be a little bit more controlled and there should be a limited supply of them and the prices should be driven high because that is the only way that people will be interested in plants um, which is true in Indonesia people are only interested in plants when they are expensive unfortunately that's, that is the culture there and I'm pretty sure to some degree it is like that everywhere in the world but imagine if you could have a variegated biliatai anywhere like you go to a restaurant you go somewhere and because they're so cheap uh, you, you buy them and they grow and if they somehow don't make it you can always replace them you can buy a different plant you know you can buy a different plant every year for your living room how interesting would that be so that is two world views about uh, the common and rare plants I'm sitting I'm leaning towards plants becoming more common and accessible and some people again are going to be leaning towards the elitist point of view where only the rich people should afford these rare plants and there should be a, a triangle scheme uh, where I'm, I actually mentioned that in one of my videos. I'm going to link that up above where I talk about you know, how people get rich off rare plants. And that is okay. Honestly, uh, it, this industry has been built over many years by some of these uh, senior growers and people who led the market. Um, there's nothing wrong with that mindset as well. So I sit uh, kind of in the middle. There's no right or wrong, but I do hope that and I have a feeling that this is unstoppable. The tissue culture is here to stay and a lot of plants will be coming out and we will be shocked initially. We will be uh, quite, quite we'll be curious, like me, I'm kind of curious as to what's going on. There will be some pioneers, some people who adopted it early, who are going to make some money from this. And there's some people who are going to come in late and kind of lose in the game. Uh, because again, right now, th these are done in secrecy and these are done in a... Uh, 
like in a mafia kind of operation, at least here in Thailand. So yeah, there's actually a, a, a protected industry. And again, it's also very easy to flood the market with like a specific species and suddenly the price would just drop like crazy. For example, like if somebody released like 10,000 of the variegated uh, tetrasperma, my goodness, you know, all these uh, growers have been growing them for many years. I think they, it's been um, around for like two to three years. I mean, it's in, in circulation, it's still very, very expensive, although the prices have gone on. But a lot of people has um, depended on that for livelihood and flooding them with tissue culture versions is a little bit unfair as well. So <laughs> there's, this is a very complicated subject. And again, I will be discussing this more uh, throughout my journey. So there will be a, a, maybe like a tissue culture uh, subject because in my channel, I'm talking about poaching. I'm talking about the retail market. I'm very interested to build and help with the retail market in Indonesia, how they can export better, how we can scale up productions and compete with the world. And of course, friendly competition. And I'm also interested in rare uh, tissue culture or future technology, not just with rare plants, but tissue culture of food, the crops that we eat, and maybe conservation of plants. So I'm interested in many, many topics. So stay tuned in this, uh, in my channel. And thank you so much for standing by, for sticking around. And yeah, I guess I will follow the journey of these guys over the next few weeks, and I'll give you an update. Hopefully, I will be able to pot them up by the time I get and and I think in two weeks time we will be able to see some roots come out of this I am pretty sure this is the Florida beauty it currently has no roots but the pink princess apparently already has roots some roots here and a lot of vines too so I really want to thank the people again I, I'm so sorry I cannot mention your name uh, but thank you for gifting this to me and thank you for the knowledge for the good chat and again I'm, I'm sharing this with my audience and I also want to remind everyone, take everything I said today with a grain of salt. This is one lab. This is what they have shared with me. There are probably many, many points of views on these. So stay tuned. And yeah, I will give you guys an update. <laughs> stay, stick around. Here is a six weeks update on the plants. This one is grown quite a lot. This is the pink princess. I can see the leaf is almost hitting the top of the jar, but there's still some fluid here where it's giving it food. So I'm gonna leave this alone for now. It's been getting medium to low light here because I don't have very bright light. It's been sitting on this uh, pedestal here. And I am on my work desk now, so there is usually air conditioning on in the daytime, so it's not super hot because they cannot be in room temperature. They cannot be in the heat, apparently. So yeah, this kept relatively cool. And I see many, many branches in there, many vines that has appeared. And this one here is the Philodendron Giganteum variegata. It's also grown in size quite a bit. And I think it looks really healthy. Look at how beautiful and glossy everything is. And I do see a little bit of root action going on, but not enough, I think, to be transplanted. However, the reason for this update is because the Florida Beauty is showing signs of mold. So this is what mold looks like. Uh, other than that, the plant actually looks really healthy. It's even put out some aerial roots. As you can see up here, it's reaching out into the sky. <laughs> so I'm going to be planting this up into moss today because I think this mold is not going to be so good for it in the coming days if I left it here. All right, so I'm going to take this off. Releasing it off its sterile environment. All right, finally some air. Whew. <laughs> Let me take it out. It'll be a lot easier with a little pincer, but let me try to do it with my fingers. Yeah. All right. There. I'm going to quickly rinse off this gel. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back and I actually took the liberty to wash this off with just uh, regular dish soap. And here is the plant. I took off some of the lower leaves that died off that already kind of turned yellow or turned to mush. But look at this, this is quite healthy. There's actually a little bit of roots in there. I'm going to be planting this in moss. So I've got some fresh sphagnum moss over here. I'm just gonna gently blanket it in there. And then I'm gonna actually put it back in a bottle. Uh, only because I wanted it to be, oh my God, it's quite a tight squeeze in there. Because I wanted it to be used to the previous environment that it was in before, the same kind of airflow. You know what, this may not have been a good idea. 
Now I can't get it out. Okay, let me slowly, slowly get the moss out. Bad idea. Bad idea. Turn around. Okay, careful. So yeah, that was actually a bad idea. The whole thing did not fit in here. So let me devise a new method. All right, so I've got a teeny little, tiny little pot like this. I'm just gonna plant it in. And I do need to, uh, what do you call it? I need to put this in a uh, tent so it can retain a bit of humidity because it's used to being in like this 90 to 100% humidity enclosure. All right, so there's that. Look at that, how cute is that? <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna quickly water this, but very gently, I'm just gonna take a squeeze bottle and just pss, a little bit of water. And then I'm gonna cover this up in a contraption. I'm gonna show you that in a bit. And done. So I managed to find like a fruit container and then I turned it upside down and just kind of have it hanging in there. And I just spray with a little bit of water. As you can see, I sprayed a bit of water on the container too so that the water can condense so that it's not a dry environment in there. There's like water vapor, everywhere providing it with 90 to 100% humidity but I kept the moss as you can see relatively airy and relatively dry you don't want to overwater it it can actually rot very easily so yeah it can draw moisture actually from the air so I'll see you guys in a bit and I'll be potting this up soon whenever it's ready this is one week since the potting up and I have bad news so as you can see this is what the container looks like I actually moved it here into my propagation room it is a little bit warmer than it is where i had it before and it's under the shelf so it's getting medium light maybe not bright enough but when you open it it's rotten this is rotten i never had any luck with this kind of propagation with this uh, propagation boxes and if you smell it it's, it smells like a rotten rotten vegetables so yeah this is mush this is not dried out this is basically as you can see this is rot and the media the moss here is actually very very lightly airy uh humid see it's not even dark it's not even wet so i have a feeling that this may not need a propagation box it's uh, suffocated itself in there uh, or maybe, I don't know, I actually open this uh, cloche. I open this every four to five days. So I've only opened it once ever since I put it in here. And maybe it just needed to be opened a little bit more to let more air in. I don't know, let me know down below. But it is a little bit warmer here. Uh, but yeah, this one did not survive. A bit disappointed about that. But for the next ones, I definitely am gonna try a different method of transitioning them into moss. And these two are ready for a for repotting. This one actually withered very quickly. It was doing just fine yesterday and today it was down. So I put it in my air conditioned room in the daytime so it is, it's not too hot. And then at night I would put it outside because I don't want it to be too cold for it. I sleep in like 20, 21 degrees AC. But this one's withered a bit, so I'm very worried about this. This is the uh, Philodendron gigantium here. Uh, so we lost that one plant before, unfortunately. I, I guess uh, tissue culture rehabilitation is harder than I initially thought. So I'm gonna take this out of here and then let's have a quick closer look at them. Anyways, they were, very, they were a bit oversized for the pot, so yeah, so there we go. This is the cute little plantlet. But again, the leaves are curling, so I don't know what's happening with the leaves. And I'm going to quickly rinse off the gooey part here because I don't want that to turn into mold and in fact other things. This one I'm not going to attempt, I think, because this is completely albino. This is not going to make it. So I'm going to chuck that away. And this is a group of them, so I'm going to try to separate it gently. Yeah, it came right off. This was actually much prettier a few days ago. Trust me, this was nice. But something happened and it's whether it could be a temperature issue, but it's curling up. It's not good. So I've got fresh sphagnum moss here and I'm going to be putting two in one pot. And then what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to be putting one in a prop box. And one of them I'm going to actually, I'm going to grow it outside. So here's the one that is in going to prop box and learning from my previous mistakes, I'm not even going to water this because the previous one rotted off 
in days. Even though I did not water it a lot, I just kept the moss a little bit moist and then uh, I kept it in that uh, cloche there and let it evaporate. It's, it wasn't by no means wet at all, but it's it rotted. So I'm being a little bit more cautious this time in, in my watering. Maybe it doesn't need that much water at this point, but this plant here, this is not looking very fresh. This is not looking good. Unfortunately, do comment down below if you know, if you think you know what I'm doing wrong with these plants. Maybe I kept it in there for too long. It is a possibility in the glass jar and it was transported with me. It was in, uh, I can't tell you exactly how I got it back, legally speaking, but it went through a bit of a transportation period. So there you go. And then next I'm going to work on this pink princess. This one's doing a little bit better. It's obviously grown until the, the top of the pot. So it's hitting the peak of the bottle. That's why this needed uh, potting up immediately. Beautiful, look at that. Oops, <laughs> that is so cute. This fell out as a gel, look at that. <laughs> yeah, but we have no need for that anymore. And look at all this baby, that baby plants coming out of this. Look at that. These are baby plants trying to repre- it's, it's dividing itself. So it's in a solution that is allowing this plant to divide itself. And in the tissue culture, culture lab, what they will do is, when the other plantlets have matured, they will just separate them and then put them in more glass jars like this. And then give them more multi dividing uh, solutions so that they will keep on dividing. So this is how you, you grow uh, tissue culture. And this is why they are so profitable if you grow them in a mass, massive scale. Let me see how many plants I can get out of this. Taking out the dead leaves. Sorry, I'm not in frame sometimes. But I don't know how else, how much more I can take out of this. Look at that. So this is the one main plant and there's a lot of babies around it. This one is probably a dying leaf. So I'm going to take it off. And then there are just babies. And this one should come off actually, but I don't know if it has any roots. I don't know. I don't want to take it off if it, it doesn't have. It's got like one strand of roots here, so it's upside down. It's got one strand of roots here. So I've got uh, like a main plant here, and then I've got these two baby offsets. So I'm gonna probably plant this in a prop box with a bit with good light, or maybe I might just put it back in here. Actually, that's the, that would be a good way to do this. I'm gonna put it in moss and put it back in there, and then these two I will grow them outside in a no humidity or in or in natural humidity. All right, so I'm done. So I actually put a little bit of slow release palette in there and I almost just watered a little bit just to have a little bit of moisture in there. Hopefully this will survive and will root. And it's not going to be in a lot of shock because it used to live in this exact vessel, but I'm not gonna keep it here for long if I don't kill it. I'm gonna keep it here for only like two weeks and then start slowly opening the jar a bit more and letting it get used to the outside air. And for these two, I'm gonna grow this outside. So I am actually going to uh, water it lightly uh, and then just keep it lightly moist every day very very lightly moist almost drying out and then let's see what happens I have a feeling that you do need to um, do need to put them in moss and in the prop box but again I had such a bad experience with the first one that I decided that I'm just gonna grow a few of them outside just so I have some kind of insurance because our climates are all different you guys so what works well for someone may not work well for others so let's wait and see how it works. And if it doesn't work, that probably means that I need to take a proper learning course on how to uh, acclimatize this to outside air. It is three weeks since our last update. Unfortunately, we lost the Gigantium. We lost both pots, the one that is in propagation box. It rotted really fast. So I don't know if they should be in propagation box, you guys. This one was grown just out here on the shelf bright in the right light i kept the media slightly moist as you can see the new leaves are actually quite healthy although some of the older ones have withered so this is probably going to survive this pink princess and this other pink princess this is the main plant so i had the lid on it for a few days maybe a whole week and i started opening it for a few minutes at a time and then now i just keep it completely open this has been like this for about three or four days and it looks just fine I'm gonna to have to take this out of the pot soon, but I'm gonna be traveling for now. Uh, roots look okay. So wish me luck on that. I guess I'm gonna close this video now. So I guess the, the summary is that rehabilitating these plants 
or transitioning them out of these jars into our climates is not as easy as you think, but I think just like with any other plant care methods, you need practice, practice makes perfect, and we do need to kill a few of these before we can get it right. So I hope that you guys are doing well with your tissue culture acclimatization and do comment down below because I really would love to know maybe where I've done wrong or maybe this is normal to lose a few of them along the way. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm at Botanist on Instagram to reach me out on there if you have any questions. I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.